discovering Swedish history from 1945 to 1986. So he's born, I think, 46. So he's older than me. But then he does, it's like a history. And for me to read it is, uh, is really interesting because it kind of helps to frame and, and broaden the understanding of the time you grew up in. Yeah, yeah. And funny thing, I, after having read your play, I figure it would be interesting to read. What does he say to say about 1967? <laughs> and it's not there. No. No. And I feel that's a major uh, gap. But uh, for some reason, <clears throat> at least it's not in the index. Right, right. And uh, that surprised me because if you're covering that period, that's kind of, that's an interesting uh, thing to, you, you kind of need to have there if you're covering that period. I think I told you that uh, I went back into the New York Times archives yeah. when I was writing this. And I was surprised at how they covered it from the time it was announced. And then they had, the stories got longer and longer until they had a long, I think it was a Sunday magazine piece. Okay. It was a very long piece oh. on it there with lots of quotes there. And then they continued to cover it after it. So what's it like now? And yeah. even the first accident that happened was, I think it was, unfortunately, it was a policeman who drove on the wrong side of the road and was, and, and was killed oh. there. But accidents went down. Oh, yeah. They continued, they continued to cover it. And of course, the first time I came across it was with the, the famous uh, photo of the cars uh, not knowing which way to go, which I don't really understand because now that I know more about it, I, I, I want, not like that photo is staged, but I think it's missing some, some context there. Yeah. But that's fascinating that it's not in, in that book. When you're reading that book, how much of it so far uh, appears to you to sort of match your own experience of those years? Uh, so, I mean, so far I've been reading from, from 46 and I'm not, I'm just getting into the 50s, like 1953. Okay. They had a polio epidemic, epidemic, uh, epidemic. Epidemic, and, really? Wow. Yeah, they had a polio epidemic in 1953. And, uh, but what's interesting is also how fast things went. And basically he talks about when he went up to his grandparents up, up north. And basically, you know, they had to take first one train, then they had to switch to a steam train, and then they had to go on a bus and then from the bus, they had to walk to a bog where his parents would carry him. And then they would, on the other side, they would, I don't think a, a car picked them up or something. And, and then to his grandparents' house where they had no electricity, uh, outdoor toilets. And uh, they basically, he said, they lived like people had done for a thousand years ago. And so many places, it was really primitive. And then yeah. suddenly, you know, even though Sweden like had not been affected by the war so much, and even though that they uh, and the industry really started to boom. So I think in 1950, unemployment was one percent, and that's where they increased uh, the imported labor from from uh, uh, Italy and from Yugoslavia later. So, so, but but society, it's also people didn't have. Out, like out there, in, they didn't have radio. They had this, if they had a radio, they had these special batteries that you could run for like 10 minutes. So people would turn them on at noon to hear the news. But there was basically, unless you lived in the city, and the, then uh, it was almost like in radio days that it was, people lived by radio and it was only one channel and it was very official, very respectful. And, but people were horrified about the youth and what the youth was doing. And they suspect that was a communist behind it <laughs> because they, they had too much fun. So, uh, so it did, it did add to kind of a, gives you a background understanding. And then yeah. you're starting to think of, because when you look back at, at yourself at that time, uh, then you realize that your whole perspective uh, was kind of, you know, it, when you grow up, you just, you just there. And yes. but then you realize that just a few years before, things were totally different. And, right. and so your perspective that you're born into 
And then when the whole 68 came, it was like the world had never, the war and everything had never, but the older generation, they had been through that. So they, yeah. their perspective yeah. was so different. So I yeah. think the whole thing with, you know, with the, the Swedish attitude of, of um, the foreigners of, you know, collaboration and uh, it looked, he, the one thing interesting, he said that foreigners usually think that the Swedes were so cooperative, <clears throat> they, they didn't complain. And it, it was like, to them, it was like almost like the person of politics. But he said the truth was that the politics was so heated and they were so angry, so nobody talked about it. And because right. nobody talked about it, the foreigners thought that they all agreed, but they hated each other's guts. And if you went to the co-op store, you know, you would never, if you went to the co-op store, meant you were a social democrat or a commie. Right. And the other one went to the private store and they would never go to the other store. So it was very, very sharp and deep. But these things, I wasn't aware of it. But now I realize that the reason we went to that store was probably not, and the people went to co-op, they did not join the scouts and they had, uh, they, they did not go to church as much. So it was, it was, even though it was secular, it was almost like a religious war. Yeah. Yes. But it was all totally under, the only person you talked about that was somebody who was really a close friend, an ideological friend. And, but at family events, you did not talk politics. And that's not because you were interested because it was so sharp. So that was that kind of interesting to me to, uh, kind of is, is it humbling a little bit to realize that uh, what you thought at that time, yeah, 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 was uh, you know different. Uh, this is fascinating to me, uh, and I can't wait to see what you make of it. I'm gonna, I need, I just looked at my battery uh, indicator here. I need to take my headphones off one more second, just get yeah, my no plug. Problem, no problem, <laughs> no problem. So let's, uh, I don't know if it helped, uh, if you got the audio was okay, what I sent you. Oh. Okay, I'm set okay. now. We're, you know, we're, we're staying in this place and, and they said, oh, it's Wi-Fi. Uh, but the Wi-Fi is actually in the unit next door. <laughs> so I, but I have figured out how to do something which is quite useful for me. I, since this is a Chromebook, I can tether it to my Pixel Android phone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm actually doing that. And I hadn't really taken advantage of that before, yeah. beforehand here. Uh, you, you know, it, I keep on stressing with the actors because, uh, you know, now I'm moving out of the writer role and the director role as we yeah. get ready. We're going to do this in December. I keep on stressing that a comedy starts with this foundation of being as real as possible, even if it's fantastic fantastic to the characters it's very real so the kinds of things you're saying uh, you know about uh, uh what sweden was like are, are of interest to me not that i'm going to uh immerse them uh, in this kind of material but as i uh did some some reading about this i was i was really interested in what society you know was like because i i honestly I started writing it. I did not know that Sweden in 1967 had hosted the Russell Tribunal 
Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I, 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 well, that, that had escaped my, my mm. notice. And I thought, well, that was like so daring because then I got into a lot of things where the U S criticized Sweden. Oh yeah. And tried to pressure them not to let the North Vietnamese delegation into mm. there. All, all of those sorts of things happen. Yeah. I'm going to send you a, a book. Uh, there's a book called Swedish Mentality, mm -hmm. and it's actually they have an English version of it. Okay, uh, good. It come and and with this guy, uh, his name is Orchid Down. Orchid Down. I'm going to send you a link to Amazon for it. Uh, let's see here. There you go. <clears throat> so what he did, he interview interviewed a lot of people who. Um, like not Swedes, but he interviewed a lot of people in business others who had worked or been in contact with Swedes. And so he tried to get an image of Swedes from a little bit of an outsider perspective. And then yeah. he wrote this book where he kind of describes uh, what he tries to see as a Swedish mentality. And I read it many, many years ago. And I think it's, uh, it's probably, you know, you should read it. It helps you understand the psychology uh, of how Swedes react, and and it's you know there are these things like uh, if there's a Swede in the you know in, in the building with an elevator, uh, you know an Italian he would kind of start a chat with people, right? So he, he would wait till the elevator is empty, and then he would step into it <laughs> because he doesn't want to talk to other people. You know? That's really interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So they have a lot of these things. And, and he, he said a lot of it is really based on the fact that the Swedish industrialization and urbanization came very late. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people are basically still, they are country bumpkins who suddenly live in the modern suburbs uh, of uh, the big cities. But in their soul and spirit, they are still country people. And, yeah. and uh, I think, so they are kind of still, they are hicks shoved into yeah. modernity and they, they were a bit shell-shocked of course today things have changed because of media and immigration and right, uh, right. everything else but for what people think of a swedish mentality is part that uh, another part is also that uh, uh, lutheranism uh, and reading had a major impact i'm reading uh, i started reading joe heinrich's new book uh, that's what this is called it for, <clears throat> which you probably would love. This is. <clears throat> <laughs> and it, it, this is, he, his previous book was, was also, it was great. The, the Secret of Success. Yes. And he, he's such an interesting guy. He's been, you know, traveling all over. He's been uh, living in, in the, with the, in the Mapuche Indians in Chile and others. And now weird, he said it's Western industrialized, Western educated industrialized, rich and democratic. And he basically said that modern psychology is basically based on interviews with college students in American and British universities, which makes the whole thing foundation is weird. And he said it, it doesn't understand uh, people, most people in the world, which has a totally different perspective. And uh, when he, one thing he explains is that he goes back to uh, 1517 when Martin Luther uh, put up his, uh, uh, his script on the wall, yes, sorry, yeah. on the door. And then he says that it, they done studies after that where you can actually see how literacy expands. You know, you can just do a map and see how many miles from Wittenberg is this place. And depending on that, you can see how high li literacy is. Yeah. And basically, yeah. Came with, with the whole concept that you have to read the Bible, solar scriptum or something, you have to read the Bible yourself. Yeah. And that affects uh, education. And that's, you know, Luther and other people and all these German princes, they start to set up schools and or people organize themselves. And Sweden was one of the countries that took this very seriously. So in Sweden, I think they got folk school in 1842. Wow. They started with, I think, a six year uh, public education. And then you can see that all these countries which had this Lutheran 
focus on, on reading, uh, they also became more independent, more, they, uh, more innovative, and the economy was better. And even you can see, look at in Africa, where you have uh, what are called missionaries, compare yeah. Catholic missionaries and Lutheran missionaries. Where you get Lutheran missionaries, reading goes up. And then when you have both Catholic and Lutheran, they compete, reading also goes up. But <laughs> so, uh, so these, this attitude to literacy and reading is also one thing that's kind of, uh, it's not only Sweden, but Sweden is, is very, very high on the scale of literacy and bookishness. People read newspapers, they read books. I don't know today, but at least when I lived there. <laughs> No, no, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I get that. There, it's that's really interesting. The, I, I have not seen this book. There's a book by Garrett Jones called "The Hive Mind," that I read a few years ago. It's a, it's somewhat controversial because Garrett Jones is, yeah, a libertarian economist. Hmm. But his overall point, which was kind of irrefutable, is that if you look at the national IQ, he wasn't yeah. so interested in individual IQ there. He found all sorts of correlations with health and uh, innovation and things like that. And of course, uh, the connection between IQ and literacy uh, yeah. was, was very firm there. So that's, that's really interesting there. Yeah. So well, let, let's jump into your, your yeah, work. Yeah. I, I got to thank you so much because you know, I, I don't know Swedish and, and I never would have uh, gone through uh, uh, you know, and I'm not going to get them right now off the top of my head there, but there were several pronunciations that uh, uh, that really were revealing uh, uh, to me in terms of what you were talking about. And of course, I, I was able to make all of the, the corrections that you talked about there. You know, the first one of these here, uh, and I'm going to get it wrong, the Yavla idiot. Yavla idiot. Yavla idiot. <laughs> yeah, so it's spelled, uh, yeah, it's spelled, it, uh, old spelling, you would have a DJ, but din, din jävla yeah, idiot. Uh, and, and somebody said, you know, if you're not, it, for, me, for me it's easy, but it's not that easy to say if you don't know, if you haven't heard it, but din jävla idiot. <laughs> jävla idiot. I'm, I'm speaking Stockholm Swedish. Which is what we, which is what we want. We don't yeah. want to, mess, we want to mess around with, with, with dialects. And you know, the the character who's North Vietnamese, and I have this very talented, funny. Yeah. She actually is Vietnamese American. Yeah. Uh, actress uh, there. She uh, she doesn't have to speak any uh, Swedish there, so uh, okay. that's easier, easier for her for her. But thanks for uh, there because we had the, uh, the switching around the Dagen. Uh, there that that was useful to know i i well i i don't know what they did in those days it just to me uh to me uh it's like you can't probably say both but to me say dog and ho uh i just would guess that they would say ho dog and yeah uh, if yeah. they even used uh the acronym that way Right. Uh, traffic. Uh, it's also that what what you would write on the you know the the poster for a newspaper or right. they may say you know they they fiddle with the words to get it in short and con condensed. But dog and ho, uh, maybe they said I don't know if they said dog well, ho or ho I or dog. At this point, we we want to go with the with the yeah, other yeah. one. And I like the way the, the rhythm of it goes there. Uh, the one that's most important for us, because it gets said a number of times, yeah. is actually the the name of uh, you know what what happens on on that day there. The long uh, word. Yes, the the Holger. Uh, it starts with Holger Trafik om Langen. Uh, how yeah. is that again? Give it to me again. Yeah, Holger Trafik om Langen. Holger Trafik om Langen. Yeah, and that, that's a mouthful even for me. But if, <laughs> or if you think about. It's almost like the German Farfagnügen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, that's right. uh, So, mm -hmm. the only way to say it is kind of, it's almost like you have to be patient. Höger trafikomläggningen. It, you know, it's like you can't condense it. It's just hög, because höger, höger is right. So, höger trafik, 
omläggningen. En omläggning is kind of switcheroo, switcheroo, omläggning. Eh, lägga is to lay, to lay, put something on a table. Lägga something somewhere. Uh -huh. Omläggning is change, so, uh, to move it kind of. So om is like uh, to undo something or to change it. So omläggning means that you are changing. So then you have höger trafik omläggningen. That's the change over to driving on the right side. Huh? So, so I think that's you just have to, maybe you just have to break it down and say höger trafik omläggning. Höger trafik omläggning. And höger, the Swedish ö, is, is uh, to get that, it's not höger, it's höger. It's very <clears throat> höger, höger. höger. And, and another thing is <clears throat> Swedes uh, enunciate their, their r's. Americans have a much softer r. It's the same yeah. in German. They say recht. Huh? Yeah. Uh, and in Sweden you say rett. You, you, they, you really pronounce the R. So you say höger trafik omläggningen. So it's not höger trafik omläggningen. Because an American would, they do softer R's. So höger trafik omläggningen. It sounds ridiculous, then it's right. Höger trafik omläggningen. See that, and you just got to what my, my uh, delight in this is because uh, when you're doing a screwball comedy, there are many aspects to it, but one of it is uh, the, simply the sound. And yeah. if someone saying something that yeah. most of our audience are going to be English speakers who know nothing of it there. So I love the point that you're making about the R because you know, the, the more they draw out that R, it, it's just there are some things that to our brains, if we're not Swedish, you know, it, the same thing is true with French or Italian, whatever. We hear these things, and they we our natural reaction is to smile or or laugh yeah. at them. So I'm going to encourage my my cast to to draw that R out as hard as they want. <laughs> they should they should practice. Uh, yes, yes, that's good. That's I'm good. and it's it's on the tip of the mouth. Right? It's not yeah. back. It's rrr. Rrr. so so trafi höger trafi. So if yeah. they get that. Uh, you can probably find on YouTube some some uh, examples, but uh, no, no, this is, this it, it doesn't is the, have like once you understand that it's distinct, er, then you can tone it down a little bit. trafik. You can yeah. almost when you say höger trafik, you can almost drop the R and just say höger yeah. trafik, and people will hear that R anyhow. So höger yeah. trafik om legningen. So. If you enunciate it really hard, höger trafik omläggningen, that it becomes almost like a teacher in front of the cathedral. Huh? Yeah. So you can't, if you understand it, you can then pull back and say höger trafik. And then I can actually drop the R, höger trafik. And yeah. you would notice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you have it open there, but uh, yes. the, the scene three, which is... Uh, Page Before you jump there, I, I'm on page, I had one thing on page six, I don't think I wrote it down. Oh, okay. You think when Sven says, funny, snälla. When she, he said, jag ville inte ta mig friheter. Uh, that's supposed to be past tense? Yes. Okay, uh, so he's talked about something that happened before. Okay, he's I was the, okay. the night The night before and trying to explain oh, why. Jag ville inte ta mig friheter. Uh, you could even say, you could even say, uh, "Jag vill inte ta mig några friheter." Några. I didn't want to. I didn't want to uh, take any liberties. So ah. you could say, "Några." It's N O G R A. Några, and that means some. And that could be if he's talking to her about something that happened. Uh, if he says, "Jag vill inte ta mig friheter," that's a bit too general. Uh -huh. If you say, "Några," means that that in that particular context. Oh, that's very good. So you could add några, which means some. And that's N-O-G-R-A. Yeah, I'm gonna give that to, I've got this wonderful actor, Atticus Kane, uh, and he, he, he dives into all these things. In fact, because, I think you'll find this funny, because he's playing this character, yeah. who father's supposed to be a jazz musician, Atticus did research on what jazz troops went through Sweden in 1967. Okay. And, and he, and I hadn't even- That's a lot probably. Yeah, well, he said Monk was in Sweden in 1967, Miles was in Sweden, and he yeah. went, I was like, oh, great. Okay, so now we're agreed. 
Your father. I heard got Miles since 1970. Well, maybe 80 something. I heard uh, Miles Davis in uh, in Stockholm. Uh, well, I said I said to him, I said, now we have our backstory, Atticus. Your Sven's father got kicked out of Monk's Quartet in Stockholm oh. and decided to stay there. <laughs> and there was also there was a number of Swedish jazz artists who actually made it and played in in major American bands. And, and that, I, that I know. I've actually I, I there's someone who's in the cast who said, "Well, would you consider using uh, you know my my music there?" And I think we will use his music there. But before I knew I was going to have that opportunity. I went back and there are a couple of uh, Swedish jazz pianists whose names are not on my lips right now, yeah. but uh, I listened to their music uh, quite good and then saw that they uh, they came to the States and played in, in a number of uh, bands there. Yeah, and there was, uh, there was this uh, singer, Alice Bobs. She sang with Lou Armstrong. I didn't know that. And Lou Armstrong, he performed in Sweden many times and that was kind of, uh, that was somewhat controversial. Some some people were were like on the on the right and more conservative. They had so that was kind of some racist attacks on him. But he he, he was very popular and and also that she sang uh, Alice Bob's got to sing with him was uh, seen as a big thing. And I find that I, I'm a huge Louis Armstrong fan. I have a lot of uh, early Louis and and Louis and Ella and all that. But I yeah. Didn't know that. yeah yeah yeah. So okay. let me let me take you down to page thirteen. Yeah, page thirteen. Let me move there. Uh, and moving uh, here, let's see, twelve, thirteen. Okay. So, uh, the the dieting phrase was. Uh, the, can you give me that again? Because that yeah. was very <clears throat> again wasn't what I would have thought. Yeah, jag bantar, att banta. Uh, it's almost like banter. Yeah, but yeah. with an a banta. And okay. I don't know where the word comes from because it doesn't sound, you know, it could be something that was imported at some point. Jag bantar. Another thing yeah. is when, when you have uh, the jog, it's, that is I, mm -hmm. uh, you generally you don't, you don't pronounce the G. Uh -huh. That's more, you know, it's like, it's more, it's written. You would say ja, jag bantar. So you yeah. can drop the G there. And in general, I think you can drop the G when you have the word jog. Okay. If very you good. said, if you say very, you know, giving a speech, jog through detta. But if you're talking, it's like, uh, jag ska ut. There's yeah. no key. So, like, I'm just going out. Well, I was trying to find a, a framework for this. I went through a lot of uh, uh, books that are online of, uh, of, you know, Swedish folk tales and Swedish phrase books because yeah. I thought, okay, I need to there. And so I came across this saying that's just below that. Yeah. Uh, and I, I thank you there. I never heard that before, but. <laughs> oh, you never heard it? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> there you go. Probably old. Uh, well, don't forget, Fanny, Fanny, she's in Stockholm now, but she came from the country, right? So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, I mean, it's probably, you know, your grandmother may have said it something. Huh? Yeah. So take, take me through that again, if you would. Rädsla mindre, hoppas mer. Ät mindre, tugga mer, gnälla mindre, andas mer. At the same time, you, if it's a saying, you would think it would be faster, quicker. So yeah. it would be maybe rädsla mindre, hoppas mer, äta mindre, tugga mer, gnälla mindre, andas mer. So I think, uh, I, yeah, I think, I think that's right. And, and you probably uh, have to go, first you have to go slow, yeah. rädsla, yeah. are you afraid? Rädsla yeah. mindre. Hoppas mer, ät mindre, tugga mer, gnälla mindre. And it's very Lutheran. You don't like, uh, don't you know? Don't eat so much, but chew yeah. more. It's like chew on <laughs> the food. Don't you don't need more if you chew well, huh? Yeah. And yeah. Don't complain. So, uh, rädsla mindre, hoppas mer, ät mindre, tugga mer, gnälla mindre, andas mer. I yeah. think. If you start every word or every two words, and then you can just speed it up. And Fanny is a character who is, you know, so sure of herself and, and can yeah. be somebody. Here she is talking to her boss, saying this. And of course, Gunnar is. Uh, by the way, how would you pronounce Gunnar? Gunnar. 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 Good. Gunnar. 
Okay. And Anni, that's that's what it is. Men Gunnar, uh, Gunnar, Gunnar, Gunnar. Uh, yeah. The R is not so distinct. Gunnar. It's not Gunnar. It's Gunnar. So yeah. You pronounce the U, basically. Gunnar. And this. Yeah. yeah. Gunnar. Yeah. The, the next one I, I wanted you to sort of take us through again there, if you wouldn't mind there, mm -hmm. is on page 18. Okay. Let's see here. Jokmok, by the way, that's a Finnish word. It's a, but up in northern Sweden, especially along the, the border, that they are right. a big Finnish minority. The people speak. Uh, uh, actually, they, they were suppressed for a long time. They were not allowed to speak their home language in schools because they, they didn't want to speak Finnish. Now, in page 18, du går som katten kring het gröt. She, when she said A ah, Sven, A ah, is that supposed to be Swedish? Yes. Then you have to have a circle on top of it. Okay. It's All an right. O. Uh, I didn't yeah. read. So O oh, Sven, du går som katten kring het gröt. Uh, she could say uh, O oh, Sven, nu går du som katten kring het gröt. Like now you're going like the cat around a hot park. Huh? You could yeah. see. New gore do instead of do gore because because now you're doing this. New gore, yeah. Yeah, Very new good. gore do. New gore do. Some cutting can hit gröt. New gore do some cutting, some cutting can hit gröt. Okay. My, my next one uh, is on 21. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, if I'm not choosing it there, it's because it became clear to me. I, you know, I think it's uh, from, from listening a couple of times yeah, yeah. to your tape there, but some I just wanted to go over again there. So this is one that starts with her good. Uh, wait a minute, I'm on, uh, let's see. see. Scene eight. I, I, I'm on 20, okay, I'll be going one more. <laughs> Harry good. Harry good. Uh, see, now I wouldn't have gotten that. I wouldn't have gotten, the, I wouldn't have gotten that sort of break between her, her, her good. Yeah. Harry good. Uh, you can say Harry Yosses. That's like uh, Yosses, probably Jesus, but um, like it's like my Lord. Harry <clears throat> good, yeah. Harry good, and Harry good is an exclamation when you are kind of shocked and and uh, you know shocked or appalled or whatever. Harry good. Vad en kan klanta till det? Vad here is the same as G. You don't really pronounce the D uh -huh. in spoken uh -huh. language, so you say Vad en kan klanta till det. And klanta is kind of Stockholm slang a little bit here. Like you screw up. Vad en kan klanta till det? Vad en kan, and n is one. It's like, you know, vad en kan klanta till det? So, so you don't need to pronounce the D. Vad en kan klanta till det? De amerikanska skitstövlarna. Skitstövlarna is the tricky one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have an Amer we have an American friend who lives in Stockholm, actually he lives in England and lived many years in Sweden and he would always crack up uh, about that word skitstövlarna because it's, it's hard for <laughs> it's hard for an English speaker to, to say that. Yeah. And he would translate from it and say shit boots. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it means, shit boots. So, you know, where do these things come from? Uh, well, look, you know, it's it, again, uh, th those of us, and I know you did it particularly because you work with language who are interested in language and words and things like that. The, yeah. the constructions that people come up with that are, you know, scatological or, or, or you know, profane there are, are yeah. all, all, all interesting. I want to again go to Fanny uh, on page 26. It seems you got Schiet Stövlar. So Schiet yeah. Stövlar. And, and the key thing is it's Schiet. Schiet. The, the, the sh sound is, uh, can be tricky in Swedish. They, uh -huh. When they're young, they tell you this joke, uh, It's almost like Peter Pepper Pan. Okay. To, to rub in that pronunciation of the different sh, sh sounds. So, the uh, Amerikanska skitstövlarna. Now, you said next page was? Uh, scene 15, it's uh, page 26. 26, okay. Oh, 26. Uh, Detta är en bit av illaluktande skräp. So I had a suggestion to change that. Uh, because it, to me, it doesn't sound like 
like colloquial Swedish. Uh -huh. Because illa luktande is uh, like foul, foul smelling. Yeah. But you wouldn't say that in a conversation. You would say it stinks. So, so, uh, so th that's why if she says that there is a bit of illa luktande scrap, it sounds more like you're in a lab and you have a piece of things that, uh, you know, a waste product that it, it doesn't sound like a colloquial conversation. So uh, you would say, this is a piece of shit, this piece of shit stinks, something like that, or, or this crap, this crap stinks. So give me the Swedish there. Huh? What would you the would Swedish say, All right, so, uh, So uh, you said the stinker is stink, the stinker. Uh, but what is it that stinks? It's uh, then higher, what, what, I don't remember, what was it that stunk? It was the, is it an object that stinks or? Yes, the headset. Oh, okay. Uh, so, and do they see her doing anything? Like, yeah, well, they, they, she's, she's actually, look at me. Like, the... Okay. Uh, what would you say? Um, her stinker, the the bus scrap, you could say, like it stinks. It's just garbage. You say, um, her stinker, the bus scrap. Good. Det är bara scrap. Um, her um, her stinker, the bara scrap. Um, her stinker. If you can see her doing it, then you could say you don't need to. To yeah. mention what it is, right? Uh, right. Yeah, that's good. Okay, the Domar Hör are stinker, or, but you, you don't need to describe that. Domar stinker, or Domar ear. <clears throat> what you want to say is that it's garbage, but is the smell is uh, smell is relevant too here? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So it's not just a technical failure. It's, it's no, they, no, it's, it's they, they literally, and she says it more than once in the play that, that, that they smell. Piece of shit may stink. Oh, okay. So dom här, uh, dom här, stink, dom här stinker, det är bara skräp. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, page, page 30, the, page another 30. grandmother saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's see that, page 30. Uh, here. Yeah, that's, So I didn't Google that, but I was thinking of uh, what that. Let's, let's just look it up for a second here. It's like basically the proof in the pudding, huh? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Now when I Google it, it's all about COVID. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, all, I I have, uh, let's see here now. I do maybe I should do minus COVID. Yeah. Because you know the 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 literal for me when I looked it up was you know the test of this is what you do, not what you say. Yeah, and yeah. He, he says, well, you know, to try explain to her because. Astrid has been using so many uh, uh, common English saying there, he turns it into the proof is in the pudding there. But yes, that's the. Yeah, uh, the thing, you know. Yeah, <clears throat> it's, so I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna think about it if I come up with something, but uh, the way it's said here is, <clears throat> instead of saying test it, test it, do you, unless you have, unless there is an old saying which I don't there, know. This is I did find this in a in a in a, a Swedish sayings book. Yeah. Okay. You could also say beviset, the proof. Mm -hmm. Beviset is a beviset på detta, the proof of this. You so you could instead of tested, you could say uh, beviset, beviset för detta, beviset för detta är vad du gör, inte vad du säger. Uh, Tested of data or what you are into what you say. She could say that probably. 
Yeah. So, I yeah, I, I'll I'll see if I come if I come up with something. But I think it can pass. I would probably use the visa for something, but maybe the grandmother knows better. <laughs> Uh, my next one is on page 36. Yeah. And, and the, you know, so many of these were, as you even said them and you gave us some suggestions, yeah. they were self-explanatory, but this helps me to, to, to go over uh, some of the ones that I think are a little trickier and, and yeah. this one trickier for me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that 36 here, it is a bit awkward, this U-swing. He tried to uh, I mean what you could I was thinking if you should instead of he tried to you should do that in Swedish too. Han försökte to göra in U swing. Uh, this is what you probably should do. Han försökte en U swing på hornskarts pucken som är enkelriktad. I think it's better flow. Han försökte en usväng på hornskapkucken som är enkelriktad. Like, which is a one-way street. Because yeah. otherwise it becomes en usväng vid en enkelriktade gatan vid. It's, it's kind of, it's an awkward formulation. And you, you, it's front-loaded a little too much. So give it to me one more, one more time. Yeah. Uh, you could say the whole sentence. Han försökte göra en usväng. På hornsgatan uh, som är enkelriktad. Som är enkelriktad. I can, I can send you, I can write. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind that one. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I, I won't phonetically get that correct. That's for no, sure. no, it can be tricky here now. Uh, um, see here. Thing. So, I think you would say, Han försökte göra en usväng vid hornskapspucken som är enkelriktad. And uh, hornskapspucken is basically, my parents lived on top of hornskapspucken for a couple of years. Yes, <laughs> it had uh, it's a very nice, uh, very nice uh, area, and they have a, a church just across the street from it. And Hornskarts uh, Pucken, Puckel is is uh, like a hunchback, yeah? Puckel. That's a, a cam, a dromedary cam. It has a Puckel. That's that's oh, yeah. the hump. Yeah, yeah. So Hornskarten is this long street that goes west east, and right, it's close to Slussen. Uh, because it, it's like a little bit hill there, mountain goes up. And then the road, Hornskata splits, and one kind of service road goes up on the Puckel. Uh, the, and, the, and that's where my parents had, uh, they had this artist got this, they got a very, very big, nice apartment from, built in a house built 1634. It was totally renovated. Wow. So they lived there. <clears throat> and so the thing is, he's trying to, with a big truck, he's trying to make this turn, and that turn, you know, if he had managed, he would get up on Hunschgart's Puckham, but he didn't get because the Hunschgart was not worried enough. So he probably got stuck there trying to get into this little narrow side street, right. service road. So that's why he was jackknifed there, probably. Yeah. So, so I'm sending a version of that to him. Okay. okay. I only have two more pages. The next page is 47. And there are two things that they say there. And I just wanted to get to hear your pronunciation. Yeah, 47. Yeah. Fanny says something and then Gun Gunnar uh, uh, replies. Oh, she says, Kastin Handuken Gunnar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. And yeah. how about his? He says, throw in the towel, give up. När helvete fryser det till is. Okay. När helvete fryser det till is. Uh, I would say 
maybe it comes a bit abrupt, the Nahel with the priestess. Uh, he could say, det skulle vara när helvetet fryser till is. Like, it would be when hell is freezing over. Okay, okay. And then, then I can send you that too. That'd uh, be great. Yeah, those were the I last two. Smooth, smoothness of transition makes it easier to say it. That's good. Oh, that's very good. That's very good. <coughs> Det skulle, det skulle vara, det skulle då vara, det skulle vara en helvetet fryser. Det skulle vara när helvetet fryser till is. I think that's uh, more rhythmic. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Was that, was anything else? No, that's it. I, uh, I, had, a, I had a question here. Över min döda kropp är skuld. Uh, Kok på isen är funny. Uh, Mr. Lidiot, you know, the four of Clader. Yeah, one question. On, uh, when you say Gothenburg, on 35. Yes. Yeah. So Gothenburg is, that's, that's in English terms. It's not Swedish. Right. So, so you, I heard you say that. that I didn't Göte know that. No, Göteborg, Göteborg is G Ö. T E B O R G. I think I sent that to you in the email before. Yeah, yeah. So, so Göteborg, Göteborg is the Swedish name for for uh, uh, for that city. Uh, and Gothenburg right. is like the, the accepted English translation of that city. And that'll be good because Roy will say the English thing there, and uh, Sven will have said the. Uh, this the one that you've just given me this you have to borrow yeah. okay okay all right okay so all right it, it's gonna be fun I, i'm looking forward to you should probably when, once you run it maybe you should try to uh you know uh try to entice some people over in sweden to to watch it oh, i'm going to i know i'm i'm definitely going to uh you know what you have a link i can share it with some friends well, it's one of the things that we learned from doing grudges is that people in Europe will will watch this if you give them, you know, a reasonable time. So if you yeah. do a two o'clock show yeah. in on the East Coast, they'll 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 watch it there. So I think we'll you know we'll we'll get and I'm you know we're we're going to publicize it. It's it's going to be free with a request that people donate to a GoFundMe for the actors, actors okay. only. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I think that will be easier than grudges where people had to commit to purchasing a ticket there. Yeah. Uh, what's most interesting to us is, is to be seen and for the actors to get the work. These are, I, I've, I've really lucked out. I've got a great cast and uh, so I'm looking forward to it. So, yeah, yeah. well, look, uh, I come back on Monday, uh, maybe in the next couple, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we can celebrate on November 4th or we can <laughs> yeah. November 4th. I'm, I'm looking, it's like, you know, restoring sanity. Um, oh my God. It's, it's just so, one thing after another, it's so, cr and who knows what will happen now in the yeah. future. Even if he loses, it's going to be, it's going to be a shit show oh, to the oh, bitter end. He's, he's desperate. He's desperate. I think they should, get, they should give him $5 million and put him up in Monte Carlo. Yeah. And, and uh, say, you know, just stay out. And you yeah. can have, you can even have a Trump hotel, put the T on the Monte Carlo, whatever. I think, I think. Uh, they didn't do a dictators in Africa. They, they paid him off to leave. That's right. That's right. Take we your family with you. Worth every penny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, right, Hans, take care. So good to see you, my friend. Same. All right. Talk to you. Bye. Looking forward to seeing you again. All right. Bye-bye.